Welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Now, I'm going to take you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I today. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 29th of September 1564, Michaelmas, or the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels, The Queen's favourite, Robert Dudley, son of the late John Dudley, Duke of Northumberland, was made Earl of Leicester and Baron Denby. Now, this earldom was no surprise. It had been planned earlier in the year to make Dudley more acceptable as a potential bridegroom for Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, the Earl of Leicester, this earldom, was an important earldom. It had previously been held by royal princes like John of Gaunt and Henry of Bolingbroke, Henry IV. And when Elizabeth first spoke to William Maitland of Lethington, the Scottish ambassador, about a potential marriage match between Robert Dudley and Mary, Queen of Scots, He laughed it off. He thought it was a bit of a joke and then asked why Elizabeth herself did not marry Dudley. That way, she could leave both her husband and her kingdom to Mary, Queen of Scots. But Elizabeth's chief advisor, William Sissel, supported the plan. After all, this plan killed two birds with one stone. It got rid of the troublesome Dudley, who was rather too close to the Queen, and it also formed an alliance with Scotland. Cecil wrote to Maitland in praise of Robert Dudley, but Maitland did not pass on the proposal to his Queen because Dudley wasn't even a peer. He was a nobody. And this was something that Elizabeth said she would rectify by giving Dudley an earldom. However, although Elizabeth's ambassador to Scotland, Thomas Randolph, was ordered to keep on urging the Scottish Queen to marry Dudley, neither Mary, Queen of Scots, or Robert Dudley himself were keen on the idea. In the spring of 1564, when Randolph spoke to Mary of the idea, she was flabbergasted. She had been married to the King of France, and here was Elizabeth trying to marry her off to a nobody and someone who was seen as one of Elizabeth's castoffs too. She didn't say an outright no though, and she demanded that if she were to marry Dudley, then she should be named Elizabeth's heir. On the 29th of September 1564, when Mary's ambassador, Sir James Melville, came to visit the Queen at Westminster Palace, Elizabeth asked him if his Queen had made up her mind about who she'd take as her husband. Melville told her that Mary, Queen of Scots, was just now thinking more of some disputes upon the borders and that she was desirous that Her Majesty should send my Lord of Bedford and my Lord Dudley to meet her and her commissioners there. Melville reported back that Elizabeth appeared offended by him naming the Earl of Bedford before Robert Dudley. And he went on to say how she informed him, but ere it were long, she would make him a greater earl and I should seen it done before me for she esteemed him as one whom she should have married herself if she'd ever been minded to take a husband. But being determined to end her life in virginity, she wished that the queen, her sister, should marry him. For with him, she might find it in her heart to declare Queen Mary second person rather than any other. For being matched with him, it would best remove out of her mind all fear and suspicion of usurpation before her death. And so Elizabeth actually made Dudley, Earl of Leicester and Baron Denby there and then in front of Melville. He wrote, this was done with great state at Westminster, herself helping to put on his robes, he sitting on his knees before her and keeping a great gravity and discreet behaviour. But as for the queen, she could not refrain from putting her hand in his neck to kittle him smilingly, the French ambassador and I standing beside her. Interestingly, Melville goes goes on to say that Elizabeth then asked him what he thought of Dudley. Melville told her that he was a worthy subject. But then Elizabeth directed his attention to Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, son of her cousin Margaret Douglas, 
and a man who bore the sword before her that day, commenting, ye like better of yon, yon long lad. That's hard to say. Melville replied that no woman of spirit would make choice of such a man that was like a woman than a man, for he was lusty, beardless, and lady-faced. However, he went on to report back to Scotland that I had no will that she should think I liked him, though I had a secret charge to deal with his mother, Lady Lennox, to purchase leave for him to pass to Scotland. It seems that Elizabeth I had got wind of Melville's secret charge, and that's why she mentioned Darnley. In February 1565, Darnley did indeed travel to Scotland to present himself to Mary, Queen of Scots, and on the 29th of July 1565, he married her. Dudley would not be Mary's husband. Now, it's hard to know how serious Elizabeth had been in her offer of Dudley to her nemesis, Mary, Queen of Scots. Was Elizabeth just playing a game? What I do love about Melville's account of this day in 1564 is Elizabeth tickling or kittling Dudley on his neck. It's not very queenly, is it? Was it simply a sign of affection? She just couldn't help herself from doing it. Or was she trying to reassure Dudley that she still loved him, even though she was talking about marrying him off to the Queen of Scots? It's hard to know, but I love it because it's such a moment of affection and intimacy, don't you think? So I've actually done, I think now, quite a few days of, uh, of good things. So there must be a gloomy one coming, I'm sure. Uh, well, you'll have to find out tomorrow. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. Uh, you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live, but rest assured I'm here every day with Tudor Tidbits for you. And you can, of course, like this video too. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.